Hey, it's Friday, time for another history briefing. Uh, so today we are in the happiest place on earth. Uh, okay, so it's not Disney World, but it's the University Archives. So it's my happiest place on earth. Uh, and there's lots of cool stuff up here at the archives uh, and we're gonna talk a little bit about it. Uh, so over my shoulder, one of the things you can see, this is a tricycle. Uh, and these are some of the tricycles, uh, or the kind of tricycle that was used uh, for many years for the, what became the Women's Little 500 race. Uh, and so for a long time, there was a, a tricycle version of that for the women that eventually led to being an actual bike race uh, for the women uh, that is a companion to the men's race. Uh, but if you go around the archives, you'll see all sorts of interesting stuff out, up here. They've got lots of, of uh, things. There's even a old, um, uh, what's that thing called? A t a turnstile. Turnstile. <laughs> turnstile. That was Dina. We'll introduce Dina in a second. That was a, that's a turnstile uh, from Assembly Hall. Uh, and so there's lots of, of neat things. But one of my favorite things uh, that's here in the archives uh, is they have this giant wall uh, that's back here behind me. And I'm not even going to be able to get far enough away that you can see all of this. But all these books up here are like quick reference stuff. So if you want to know like what classes were offered in 1848, uh, if you want to know, and they have actual copies of the bulletin from 1848. Uh, they've got the yearbooks, they've got the alumni uh, catalogs, they've got the alumni magazines, they've got all sorts of books and things that are published about IU. But now we're going to talk about some of the other things you might not think would be in the IU archives or some of the neat things from the IU archives. And to help me with that is my friend Dina. Uh, so Dina is director of the archives uh, and she pulled out some stuff uh, for us to look at today and, and talk about real quick uh, to give you an idea of some of the things that are here in the archives. So Dina, what do you want to start with? Well, first I'd like to just tell you that the mission of the archives is to collect, preserve, and make available university records of enduring value. So we work with offices, university centers, mm -hmm. to help them identify those records that should come over to the university archives so that we can make them available to researchers from around the world. Yep. So it'll be I, a lot of that. Yeah, I just had that conversation with somebody the other day that was like, we have this file cabinet full of old stuff yep. in our office. Mm -hmm. And I was like, the archives would love to have it. We can yeah. help. We can so, help. Yep. So we have lots of university records, but we also collect faculty papers, alumni papers, and so we have this really rich collection of almost 18,000 cubic feet as a guesstimate, three and a half million photographic images, architectural records, those sorts of things. So some of the things that you may not expect us to have, I wanted to show off for you today a little bit. So one of the things, so the um, student publications, we have the Indiana Daily Student, we have the Arbutus up there on the shelves, but there are a lot of independent student publications and we collect those as well. One of our favorites is called The Vagabond. It started in the 1920s and went into 1931. It was a literary magazine, sort of. Um, uh, there was a lot of sarcasm in it. Um, <laughs> there were features of IU staff, faculty, students, and beautiful artwork. I mean, this is some fantastic artwork from the 20s and 30s. Um, and so these are really magnificent pieces. They are fully digitized, and they're available through archives online. If you go to the IU Libraries website, you can find them. And this random one I just happened to grab has an article about ROTC, John. Oh, so, cool. <laughs> um, and then here's one of our treasures. So we do not deal in money, um, but when people ask us what is our most monetarily valuable thing, um, I guess that it is probably what we call the pairing letter. It was written in 1833 by Cornelius Pairing, who came to Monroe County to be the principal of the Monroe County Female Seminary. And he wrote and sent it back to friends in England, where he came from, and tells them all about uh, what he found in the United States, his travel from the East Coast over to Indiana, going through Kentucky, where he visited family. He talks about Bloomington and Monroe County in details that we just don't have anywhere else. But it's also beautiful. I don't know if John will be able to show you this, but he wrote in cross hatching. So we've got this in mylar, so there might be a little bit of a glare. Cross hatching, which is where they wrote in one direction and then they wrote in the other direction in order to save paper. Additionally, pairing was an artist. These are miniature watercolors of the Seminary Square campus, Monroe County, the Grog Shop right next to the um, county library, <laughs> and some of the typical houses that he came across. This is also digitized. You can find some of the details of the scans in our photo collection. And then also, um, we have a link uh, to 
the content of the letters that have been transcribed. Hit us up, archives at indiana.edu, and we can help you with that. And then, of course, because it's John, I had to pull out some military-related things. So, I mentioned we collect alumni papers. Um, John Alexander is an alum who graduated in 1861. He went on to serve as a captain in the Union Army during the Civil War, and his family donated some of his papers to the IU archives. Um, so we have about a dozen letters that he wrote from the field during the Civil War. And then we have a sword, his field sword. John has looked at it. He is almost certain that this is what he actually used in the field, mainly because there is some damage here on the hilt. Is that yeah, what we'll that's called? Yep. I'll see if I can get it in there. There we go. And um, Alexander, we know, was wounded in, um, in one of the battles. And John says that this would have been an extremely simple uh, repair, but the fact that Alexander did not get this fixed, ah, it's okay, did not get that repaired is kind of uh, a sign of pride, right? Yeah, and so those of y'all that are uh, a little more on the Civil War history side, you might uh, uh, be able to talk more about this sword, and you can come check it out, you can come mm -hmm. look at it. But So one of my theories was, like, this would have been easy to get fixed, but he didn't. Mm -hmm. uh, and so my guess is that, like, there was a symbolic meaning as to why he didn't get it fixed. So maybe that w it happened in the battle that he was injured in. Uh, he also went on to be very involved in the Grand Army of the Republic, which was the veterans organization uh, for the Union soldiers, and he donated some scrap, there's some scrapbooks of his uh, that the family donated that have all of his veteran stuff that's in them as well. Uh, they also have letters from him uh, during that time. They even have a pair of binoculars, and they even have his rank insignias. Uh, like, there's some really neat things of his that are all a part of this. Uh, and so those are, you know, some of the sort of things that you would ex uh, maybe not expect to see in the IU archives. Um, and it's really super simple. If you want to come check something out in the archives, you can go online. You can look and see through the files and what's in there. And if you can't find what you're looking for, you can shoot them an email, and then they'll usually direct you to where it is. And then because, as Dina said, a lot of stuff stored off site. Usually you got to say, hey, give them a day or two's notice at least um, and say, hey, I'm going to come on this day. Can I see this? And you saw some of the wooden cabinets that are around here, they'll have a cabinet with that stuff in it ready for you uh, when you get here and you'll get to check it out uh, and look at it and get hands on with some actual history. So anything else? I would just say that we, uh, if you don't think that we would have anything related to a project you're working on, shoot us an email. You never know. We also work with instructors on campus, graduate mm -hmm. students, faculty members. If you would like to get your students some experience working with some primary sources, hit us up. We yep. can help you. And, and I've worked with a number of folks that have questions about family members that came to IU that are doing like genealogy sort of work. Uh, and and that, that information is here too. If you've got somebody that, that was an IU alum or a former student or staff or faculty member, a lot of that stuff's here too. So anyway, longer video for today, but I tried to include a whole lot of stuff. Um, so we'll be back next week uh, with another update. See you then.